Hey everybody, this is Tony and I'm here today with a special guest, uh, none other than accomplished actress, author, model, uh, uh, a woman who does it all, uh, Miss Daphne Maxwell Reed. How you doing today? I think I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, the 30th anniversary of the Fresh Prince of Bella, which most of us know you from, uh, has happened uh, and aired on HBO Max. Um, how has this experience been for, uh, for you, uh, seeing the 30th anniversary happen and then hearing the reactions uh, from there? When you think about, I was a grown woman when I did this show, and it's 30 years later, you make you feel like you've aged a bit <laughs> <laughs> but it was a wonderful occasion it was fabulous to see everybody in the same place at the same time right. which is different we see each other scattered about um but uh it was tremendous it was a great two days of shooting and a wonderful week in la having a ball waiting for, getting ready for, and just glowing with the reunion. Yeah, I'm sure. And then there was a lot of uh, uh, content I know that we didn't get to see, obviously, because they edited it. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I can just imagine uh, what was going on behind the scenes of what we actually saw. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you should have been there. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I got to see what's going on because I told everybody to call. But I got no call, so I, you know, I got to find out what's going on. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> now, of course, uh, the, the Fresh Pits wasn't your only uh, job. Um, you've had numerous jobs and a career, a very uh, long career. Um, of course, when I think about your roles, uh, you had numerous guest starring roles, uh, series, including uh, Frank's Place with your husband back in the 80s, uh, the late 80s. Uh, Mr. Tim Reed, uh, which was basically his show. I like to call that, uh, you know, his version. I say Marla Gibbs had 227 and he had Frank's Place. It was like their baby. Uh, and, and, and you all both uh, acted as uh, husband and wife on there. Um, how does no, that... No no. No? no, no. no, no, I was a, a prospective girlfriend. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Well... <laughs> So how do, how do you balance work life and marriage uh, when you guys have worked together numerous times like that? Well, it's just part of the way we have come together. Um, this was not our first marriages. We right. knew what we were getting into this time. Yes. And uh, we set the parameters and we loved working together. So that's what we did. And I supported what he was doing. He was supporting what I was doing. Right. And um, it went on that way for 30 years. We've been married 38 years now. Okay. So for the past five years, I have not been working with him. He's been working <laughs> on his own, and I've been working on my own, and that works as well. I mean, you, you set your boundaries, you set your uh, parameters, and you live day by day. You try to love each other through the hard times, and support each other through the bad times. Of course, of course. Uh, at some point, uh, the Fresh Prince and Sister Sister were running at the same time uh, for a few years, matter of fact. Uh, did that ever cause any you know, uh, uh, time to not be at home or, or any friction? Uh, well, I won't say friction, let me change that. Uh, did it, it cause uh, any conversation to be had? Like, you know, maybe we need to spend some more time together or, or anything like that? <laughs> no, you know, we were together. When you're doing a sitcom, you have evenings. You only work during the day. Okay, okay. So uh, we were there together in L.A. We weren't living in L.A. We were living in Virginia. Right. So we had an apartment in L.A. And we were there. We were working. Sometimes somebody was tireder than somebody else. But it was just normal life to us. We've been doing this since we had been together, so. Mm, okay. Real, real actors and real professionals. That's what it is. <laughs> Just real people that <laughs> go to work to be an actor. Of course. You come home, you're not an actor. You're, right. you're that, I mean, I'm a that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, um, you know, it's, it's really a blessing, and, you know, to see an example like you guys be together for so long and to be married. Uh, it's not like, you know, it's, 
uh, fake or facade or anything like that, I can tell that it's true. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't be there for 30 plus years uh, at this point if it wasn't. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but it's it's been good and it's been horrible. I mean, that's yeah. just life. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you get through the horrible and you get back to, oh, this is good again, <laughs> you know? It, it's it's like anything, like you said, it goes up, it goes down. Yeah. Um, but the 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 mainstay is that you guys manage to stick it out and stay together through those hard times, though. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's what's to be respect. You, know, right. you have respect for each other, and um, you don't always like each other, but you respect each other. You learn how to fight fair, right? And you just give people room to grow absolutely and that's all you need to do absolutely of course i want to talk about some of your early life though uh you graduated from northwestern university um a, a very accomplished woman i don't think people realize this uh and they just see you as aunt v of all the time and it's like no she has a lot more than that uh that's great but you, you have a lot more than that so talk to me about uh, graduating from northwestern and how you ended up being uh, a model first because you didn't start out acting you started out uh, that part first. So talk to me about that. Or it was both. It's all very mushed up together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was acting when I was in high school. I was uh, in the group theater workshop, which was um, a little black theater company that we did things in the park with Shakespeare in the park with Joe Papp. And we did things in community centers and in playgrounds around the city. And that group, turned into what is now the Negro Ensemble Company. It was all led by Robert Hooks and we just had fun. That's, I mean, I never considered acting as a career because I didn't have a lot of examples of black women making a living. Right. Acting. Yeah, especially at that time. Yeah, so this was the mid 60s. Mm -hmm. And when I um, got to college, I was pursuing a career as first a teacher and then um, changed my major to interior design and architecture. But having come from New York City, I had been exposed to a lot of cultural things. I mean, I had New York is a great place to grow up before. I don't know what it is like now. It's a little <laughs> different than when I was growing up. But uh, when I got to Northwestern, it was a totally different environment. I was one of 36 black students in a, you know, there are 5,000 students at the school when I got there. Mm. So it was a culture shock for me right. that there was such a division between black and white. I uh, had not had that in New York City. But besides that, I had still grown up as an individual. My mother had taught me that I could do and be anything I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So I was always an achiever and a leader. And because I was a leader in junior high school, <laughs> my <laughs> junior high school teacher submitted me to 17 men. Hold on, we cut out. If you can hear me, I can't hear you right now. I just thought it was a lovely way to uh, spend some time. Right. I managed to get my schoolwork done, but I managed to make a little money on the side. And all they asked me to do was smile. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, finally, um, I kept doing that until one day uh, I ended up on the cover of Glamour magazine. And I happened to be the first woman on the cover of Glamour right, magazine. Right. But I was still in school. <laughs> and I kept going to school. <laughs> and then I married my college sweetheart. And then I graduated pregnant and uh, had my son. And I continued to model in Chicago. And then this guy named Robert Conrad, who you are way too young to remember, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, was doing a television series there called The Duke. Okay. And he hired me to play a part. I was modeling 
I was doing commercials, but that's all the acting that I was doing. Right. And um, he hired me and I started and had a great time. I knew how to act, but uh, it was different learning what to do in front of a camera live. Right. I could work a, a camera as a still model, but I had never, besides commercials, done acting on film. Okay. So that turned into a series. And when that series left and I left uh, Chicago and moved to Los Angeles, I looked up Robert Conrad when I got there and he said, oh, I got another show that I'm doing called A Man Called Sloan. And I want you to play this part. I said, okay. So I was able to get an agent uh, while I was out in LA. I was working the first month I was in LA. Oh, wow, okay. And I continued to work. It, I was in the right place at the right time when television was opening up to blacks being on camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just kept going. So it's not like I planned all of this. As, <laughs> I've got to be an actress and I'm going to LA and I'm gonna make a question. I was in the right place at the right time. I was prepared. I had learned my craft. I knew how to hit my mark and find my <laughs> light. And um, I guess the gift of natural acting came from God, like all my other gifts came from God. And absolutely, it just became a career. <laughs> <laughs> a very uh, 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 rewarding one, uh, I was. It has been, and I mean, I don't know how it could have been better. There right. were down times, of course, but during the down times, I had lots of things that I loved doing, so it didn't bother me that I was not acting. Mm. Uh, I could do other things. Yeah, I, I think that's a great thing, too, that uh, people can take from you, is that you use really everything that you have uh, and have been given and, and, and actually do them. It's not like, you know, you doing one thing and say, oh, I have to just do this. So I appreciate that about you and, and, and that you use those gifts that God have given you. Uh, if you don't use them, you're kind of snubbing your nose to the gift. Mm -hmm. You really are given these gifts to manifest them as best you can to honor the fact that you were given these gifts. Right. So that's how I've lived my life. That's right. And that's true. Uh, thank you for that, uh, you know, little nugget right there, because it's so uh, profound uh, uh, just to hear. Uh, sometimes we need a reminder of the things that we should be doing in life. And sometimes somebody happens to come by and say just a few words and you're like, OK. I, oh, I can yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. An aha moment. <laughs> so, you know, of course, like you said earlier, you use all the gifts that you've been given. And of course, now you've got some books out uh, with some of these gifts. Um, you have a cookbook, uh, for one, that I know you have out, um, and that one is Grace, Soul, and Mother Wit. And uh, you, you pretty much call this a cookbook with some of your stories in it. So talk to me about this and how uh, you ended up coming to the point of writing books, period, because you have more than this book we'll talk about. Okay, the cookbook was my fifth book. Okay. And uh, it was the only one of its genre. Uh, <laughs> I have been collecting recipes, oh, since I was a teenager. Okay. My mother was a great cook, and I loved the way she presented food as a loving gesture to her family. Mm -hmm. She really enjoyed serving a meal and sitting down at the table and having that communion with her family. Right. And that's how I grew up. So I always knew that food was an integral part of my communicating with my family, my community. And um, I've been collecting recipes for all those years. Okay. So after about 40 years of collecting <laughs> these recipes and storing them on my computer and every once in a while making a small little cookbook that I would send to friends for a holiday gift or something, I said, well, I gotta get this off my computer. So what? what kind of um, company would I like it to be in? I'm not a professional chef. Okay. I am not a cook. <laughs> I'm not a big celebrity. 
that, you know, could sell a book just by saying, I wrote this book. Right. So I had to give it some breadth other than just food. And I decided to make it a mini memoir. Okay. So I did a little bit of my growing up in New York City, and I have lots of pictures that my father used to take of me uh, and my family as I was growing up. He had a camera. We've always had cameras in my house. I grew up with a camera. I grew up with a camera and a sewing machine, and I'm never without either one. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so the cookbook finally came off of my, my computer once I decided the format and telling the story of each of the recipes and where I'd gotten it from and what that person meant to me. And it kind of gives you details of the journey that I took through life from these 40s to the hmm, 2000s. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, I think that's a, a, a very clever way to do something though, because uh, honestly, I, I, I don't, I think you're probably the first person I heard do something uh, like that. Uh, normally people just want to go jump out and write, write a, you know, a bio or, you know, whatever the case may be, or they say just a cookbook, but you incorporated both. Uh, it shows how uh, creative you really are. I can tell. Uh, now, of course, your photography, as you said, uh, you, you have books with those as well. So you take photos as well. Uh, so talk to me about those uh, books. Uh, I had uh, a career, a journey okay. as a photographic <laughs> artist that I started when I was 60 years old. Okay. And uh, I had collected through my computer files. I said, what have I been taking pictures of? Because I traveled extensively in the 70s and 80s and 90s. So I've been all over the world and I've always taken pictures. Mm -hmm. And I looked through my files and realized that I had mostly taken pictures of doors from around the world. Mm. And I think it came from my uh, focus on architecture, which is one of my main focuses in looking at something. Right. how it was made. And I was really enchanted by the craftsmanship or the color or the shape of the door. And I took pictures of them. So when I first started my journey, because <laughs> you just, I wasn't a photographic artist. I just woke up one day and said, I'm going to be a photographic artist. <laughs> and you figure out what that means and how to do it. Right. And I started a gallery show first, and I had been on a board of an art gallery uh, that was local to my city. And they had a blank month, and I said, can I hang my stuff? And they, yeah, 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 yeah. And I hung my pictures on the wall, held my breath, and it worked. <laughs> so <laughs> I started that journey with that. But the pictures that were selling right off the wall mm -hmm. uh, were framed prints. And the economy changed in 2008. So the framed print idea was not viable for most people. They weren't buying pictures of doors, they were buying food. So <laughs> um, I said, let me see how I can translate this into something more accessible. Right. So I started making note cards. Okay. And then people started booking me to talk to their uh, events and their chamber meetings and things like that. And I kept presenting my story of my journey through um, getting fixed photos of the doors. And I kept telling the same story over and over again. I said, well, why don't I just write this down? Right. And that became my first book. Mm. And I took my travels and my thoughts and all the things that I was explaining at these talks and put them into a format that I really liked. And I took it to a publisher and they said, oh, this is lovely. No, we won't publish that. <laughs> this is not something for a bookstore. It's something for a gift shop. So we, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. But here's some notes if you'd like them. And the man sat there for an hour and gave me notes on formatting and on choices of all sorts of things. And I listened. I took those notes. I transposed them into my version of the book. And it came out beautifully. So I said, oh, I can do this. I published it myself. So I learned the publishing journey. 
Right. All the journeys that I take are involve learning the processes and learning and expanding my repertoire of what I know about how to do something. Mm -hmm. And that's the joy of taking these journeys for me. So after the first book, I did another one on Cuba when I took a trip to Cuba. And then I took a trip to Belgium and I did another one. And I took a <laughs> trip to France and I did another one. So uh, I was on my publishing kick and it seemed to be working because those books keep selling. That's right. That's right. I, I mean, people always want to see different things like that. You just have to find the proper audience for it. Uh, but it, it's an inspirational story. That's why I do Doors is because Doors are a metaphor for life for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want to inspire people to take a look at the details in their life on their journey, because that's where all the richness is. It's in the details. It's not into just accomplishing the goal that you set out, but it's the journey to that goal. Absolutely. Um, I could tell that's some, been something in your mind for a long time because... Uh, I was watching one of the old clips they put up of uh, you and your husband on the uh, lifestyle of rich and famous. And uh, you were talking about the doors on the house that you guys had at the time that you were having replaced and how you had to have it cut, cut out because it was too big and, you know, all this kind of thing. So it, it's, it's not new for you, I could tell. No, uh, I love all, I love transporting myself through the decoration of my house. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, you interior design is your thing and, and those kind of things. So, I mean, it would only make sense anyways. <laughs> uh, of course, you, you design your own pieces now as well, doing clothing. Uh, so talk to me about this. And, and I see, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of the pieces uh, that you made was one that you were wearing on the reunion? Yes. Okay. Yes, that so was. How did that get started? And... Uh, what what are what are the names of the pieces? So make so I want to make sure I'm getting this right. Uh, the Chinese silk brocade uh, pieces that I are called toppers. Okay. And toppers. They're like jackets, but they they don't have but one closure, a little uh, Chinese frog closure. But you can wear them over gowns, or you can wear them over jeans. But what I loved about it, I fell in love with the fabric, mm. and uh, I had a resource that had just hundreds of different colors and designs in this Chinese silk bro brocade. So I started plucking them out and making jackets for myself. And when I would wear one of these jackets, um, people would stop me in the street mm. and say, where did you get that? And I, <laughs> I made it. And they said, oh, would you make me one? And I said, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> Finally, my husband, who has an institute that trains filmmakers, was having a fundraising fashion show. Okay. And he says, I'd like you to make some of those coats that you make for yourself, because I think it would go over well in the fashion show. They did, oh. and they sold off the runway. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not going to be chained to my sewing machine, much as I love it. <laughs> so I'll do a custom business. Okay. So that's what I've done for the past five years as a custom business with the silk brocades. And then the final year, about two years ago, uh, my last design was a swing coat, mm -hmm. which is a classic style that um, women of all ages can wear and very comfortably. Uh, and I made them out of linen and it was a whole rainbow of colors for the fashion show. And they each had these exciting, quirky linings in them. So when they swing open, you've got all this going on on the inside of the coat. And those sold well as well. So I have a few of those left. And I think I might have two of the original coats left. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I sell them on the website. I have uh, just my name, DaphneMaxwellReed.com. And it has Daphne style, which is what I call my group of clothing. Right. And no, I don't make a whole line of different things. I don't manufacture. <laughs> I just have a custom business with very few choices, but lots of different fabrics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's only you making the uh, uh, items, uh, right? 
they're all art pieces to me. And it's wearing one of my toppers is like wearing a piece of statement jewelry that you would find somewhere that you just are totally attracted to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Uh, now going back to acting, um, of course you got a, a new movie out on BT Plus, uh, The Business of Christmas. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, what, what, how did that situation come about? Uh, BT Plus is really pulling in some big stuff right about now too. Um, Finally. And, yeah. And is acting still the same for you uh, as well, like when you first started? I don't know that I could compare the two. I don't um, start with as much trepidation as I did when I started. <laughs> but um, this was, uh, I got a call asking me to read a script and see if I'd like to portray the mother in this film. And I have to honestly say, this was the first time that anybody has ever done that. <laughs> Sent me a script and say, I want you to come to work. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the script was lovely. And uh, so I went to do the show and it was just a, a really lovely script. It's about a family who owns a toy store. Yes. And uh, they've had it for generations. And it's in a neighborhood that is, basically historic as a black neighborhood. And of course, everything around them is being gentrified and giant yeah. stored. And they're trying to hold on to this family business. And they have three grown children who have very interesting lives. And um, the kids won't come home for Christmas because they're so <laughs> busy and mommy wants them home. Uh, but dad gets sick and they all descend and find out that there is a problem with the mortgage or some kind of loan that was made and they were gonna lose the store in the house. Mm. And then hijinks ensue. <laughs> and <laughs> because it's a Christmas movie, it all ends well. Of course, it, it has to, at least hopefully. <laughs> um, I do wanna talk a little bit more about the uh, reunion and then I can let you go. Okay. Um, but when you uh, were, on the uh, reunion, you said when it first uh, came around, you heard it was dealing with the rapper. You said, no, thank you. Uh, and you like, no, until you saw the show. Um, when the time came for you to step into the role, um, what made you ultimately say yes then? Well, I was offered an audition for the show. Okay. And I had seen the show and I said, oh, this is a very cute show. And I was available. I was living in Virginia on the farm and <laughs> I'd love to go to work. <laughs> so I said, well, let me audition for this and give it my all. Okay. And two weeks of auditions. It was a long process. Yeah. I, they saw women I've never seen before in show business. And I go, oh, where'd she come from? <laughs> it, was, it was an interesting process. But by about the third audition, I got to read with James Avery. Okay. And I fell in love with James Avery. He was just a <laughs> wonderful, wonderful person. And we, I guess, had that chemistry that was needed to make it look like a couple. That's right. And I got hired. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was um, thrilled. Once you got into things, or well, once you first got into things, let me say, was there any apprehension for you knowing that somebody else had already been in the role? Didn't have anything to do with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I start a job, it's because I'm starting. Okay. I don't care what was there before. I can only bring to the job what I have from my toolbox, my personality. Mm -hmm and my professionalism that's all i can bring right and that was what they were buying so that was what i was serving yeah. and it i had no idea what had gone on they never spoke about it even if i asked they said we don't talk about that i said okay and i never, <laughs> exactly. never talked about it and i had never met her so i didn't know her i didn't know the circumstances I only knew what social media decided was going to be us pitting against each other. I said, I can't pit against somebody I don't even know. Exactly, so, exactly. Just ignore that. Yeah, for you meeting uh, Janet Hubert for the first time, how was that? It was lovely. I mean, she belonged there for the reunion. 
Right. She started the show. Yeah. And uh, I just told her, welcome home. And oh, it was wonderful. just a big hug. It's wonderful. And especially seeing that you two were two different women. Uh, it was the same character, but you were two different women. So you brought two different elements and things to the role that, you know, only you could. Mm -hmm. um, for you, what did the character of Aunt V of mean? What, 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 who was she and what was she to you? She was a strong black head of a family that had a rock for a husband. Mm -hmm. He was the pole around which everything revolved, but she was his equal. Right. And she was the mother of three very distinctive children, each loved by their mother, but each allowed to be their quirky selves. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that made the show an iconic kind of gathering of people because everybody had a different point of view. Right. And we all came to a conclusion at the end of each show, but you got to see the various takes on the situation, which I thought was very <laughs> clever. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, especially have a dynamic where everybody is really just themselves. Yeah. It's not like you have to be like me and I have to be like you. So it, it, it's always something special to have that. And then, you know, as you guys would say, the cast was like a family. So I would, I would assume and imagine that that would make your job way easier because it's not like work anymore. It so. was a joy. It was a joy. And to see the, the professionalism and the passion that Will put into that show mm -hmm. was just remarkable to see a young man bloom like he did over those three years that I was with him. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, I, I, I'm like a proud auntie. <laughs> of course. Um, when, you, when you look at a role, uh, when you look at a script, even for Aunt Bia, uh, do you feel like there's a, or, or uh, underlying responsibility that you have that's not on that paper? Well, you always have the responsibility of integrity yeah. that you want to bring to your culture and that you want to bring to your personhood. Yes. Um, so there's always um, a defining line between, uh, no, that's too far. We're not going there. Uh, and <laughs> what you want to present, because this is a, a legacy. Film never goes away. That's right. And there will be generations of people. We're already on our third generation of people watching the show. Mm -hmm. So there'll be generations of people who will see and hear and react and and just respond to what you present. Right. And I don't want to present anything that would send someone astray. <laughs> right. That's right. So I, I've been very conscious throughout my career to make sure that the messages that these images are sending were ones that I could be proud of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I want to definitely say, Miss Daphne, I want to uh, commend you tremendously. Um, watching, being one of the younger watchers uh, and, and going back and hearing the different stories and seeing the show and how it changed and evolved and different things like that, I really want to commend you uh, for the style and the grace and the class that you had stepping into a situation uh, that you were brand new to. But you really took it on and you made it your own. And I think that's why a lot of people just, they had to respect you because you, you, you made sure it was demanded. And not in an arrogant way, but you just gave off that aura, that style. You just gave off what you had. And it was like, okay, wow, how can I hate somebody like this? <laughs> so you can if you'd like, but uh, it doesn't do anything to me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I, I definitely have to commend you for that because a lot of people, um, aren't as, as gracious as you are to do something uh, that, that way. So you, you are a special kind of person and it shows a lot about your character. I can say that much. I thank you. Yes, yes, of course. Now, um, before I let you go though, uh, is there any uh, new things we're working on? Um, I know the business of Christmas we just talked about, that's on BT Plus, uh, for those of you who haven't watched it. Um, and do we have anything else coming up right now? Um, on television, no, I don't think so. Um, it's been a quiet, it's been quiet in Lake Wolverine uh, <laughs> <laughs> with this COVID stuff. Of course. Uh, so I've been, uh, doing creative things. I've been making masks and, uh, serving on various boards that are helping 
feed folk and all that kind of stuff, taking care of children around the world. So I've been busy in my room. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I think we all have at this point. I'm kind of deciding what I want to do next. And uh, I may be writing some more. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So just let everybody know where they can find you on your social medias uh, and give the website again too. Well, social media on Instagram, I'm MS Daphne. That's D-A-P-H-N-E. Don't stick any more letters in there. <laughs> <laughs> and the number 13. And that's my IG handle. And Daphne Maxwell Reed is my uh, website. And it shows everything that I do on that website, the cards, the books, the cookbooks, the style, and all the press that I'm doing, oh. I've been doing for the past couple of years. So you can <laughs> learn a lot about me just by going to the website. <laughs> Absolutely. Hopefully they go to the website. It's a lot of cool things on there, honestly. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, of course, this is none other than Miss Daphne Maxwell Reed or Aunt Bea, as most of us call her. Good. Thank you so much for, for doing this with me today. And I hope you uh, please stay safe and have a, enjoy the rest of your morning. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your holiday. Yes, of course. Happy holidays. Same to you. And I'll be talking to you again soon. So please stay safe until then, okay? Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.